Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the 3D Formula controller to set custom ranges for your knobs in Patcher. So I use Patcher a lot to make my own presets and almost like mini synthesizers, and I'll find myself sometimes wanting to, you know, customize how the knobs change the values of the parameters that they are connected to. And so sometimes I'll want to limit the range, sometimes I'll want them to adjust the parameter in steps rather than continuous. And there are just a bunch of different things that I sometimes want to do that are different from just how the knobs normally control a parameter. And in this video, I'm going to be talking specifically about how to set custom ranges for the controllers on Patcher. Uh, so for example, in this preset here, I have kind of a deep house bass. And I want to adjust the operator 2 modulation amount. And for this example, let's say that I've already used up my X and Y modulation so that I can't just connect this, um, you know, the volume to the mod X or the mod Y. And I have to figure out a different way to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up uh, controlling this volume parameter here. So I'm going to right click this and activate it. And then on the surface, I'm going to add a knob and I'll rename it FM amount. And then I will attach that knob to uh, that volume parameter. Uh, so now, you know, you would hope that at the bottom of the value uh, for this knob that the FM amount would be zero. But in this case, because this volume parameter is bipolar, it actually turns out to be minus 100%. So 50% is kind of the actual zero FM. You know, 50% on this knob is actually where there's no frequency modulation happening. And that's not very intuitive, so you might want to change that. And the way you can do this is by using the Fruity Formula controller. So I'm going to add a Fruity Formula controller. And I'm going to use the plugin database. Uh, it's an effect plugin, but you can use the plugin picker if you prefer. And then um, under controller, it's the Fruity Formula controller. So I want to activate um, an input on this. And I want it to be uh, the C parameter. And then I'm going to set that um, knob that I've made, instead of having it affect the volume parameter here directly, it's going to affect the C parameter on the formula controller. And then I'm going to also enable the output on the formula controller, and I'm going to use that to adjust the volume parameter on Citrus. And so inside formula controller, I am going to use the A and the B parameters to set the range for C. So basically I'm going to want the C value to go from A to B. So if C is at zero, it will be at A, and if C is at one, it will be at whatever B is set to. And so I'm going to go into the formula box and uh, write in my own formula. And so the formula I want to type in is B times C, plus open parentheses, one minus C times A. Um, and then you can hit compile. And I'm going to go to the monitor. And now you can see A and B are both set to 0.5. So no matter where C is, um, it's going from 0.5 to 0.5. So the output is 0.5 regardless of what the C value is. But if I take A all the way down and take B all the way up, then you'll see that C goes from uh, all the way down, it's at A, which is zero, and all the way up, it's at B, which is one. Um, if I adjust B to be 0 0.5, then all the way up, it's at 0 0.5, and all the way down, it's at zero. Um, and if I adjust A to be to 0 0.191, and I take C all the way down, then it's at 0 0.191. So whatever I do, 
it's going from A to B uh, if I take C from 0 to 1. So if I take C from 0 to 1, the output goes from A to B. And so I'm going to use this, and I'm going to set A at 0 0.5 and B to 1. And the reason I want this is because it means that for this citrus patch, it's going to take this volume parameter from 50%, uh, which if you remember, that was no uh, frequency modulation, to 100%, which is the full amount of frequency modulation. And now if I play the sound and adjust this, you should hear that. And I think that's really nice. But maybe there's a case where you don't want this to go uh, quite all the way up. You know, maybe that's a bit too much. So then you can just go into the formula controller and kind of reduce this. Um, until it sounds right to you. And now when I adjust this, it you know takes the volume uh, from 50%, which is no frequency modulation, up to the amount you set in the controller. And it just allows you a lot more customization inside of Patcher. Uh, so you're not stuck using, you know, the full 0 to 1. Instead, you can kind of uh, customize the range and have that customized range apply to uh, the knob instead. And something else this formula allows you to do is it allows you to invert the values for these knobs. So in this case, you can hear I have a reverb on the sound. and if I want to um, you know, have a mute option on that reverb, if I want a button to turn the reverb on and off, I'm going to use the Mute 2 plugin, and I'm going to activate the mute parameter, and I'm going to add a button on uh, the front panel. And I'll rename it uh, Reverb Mute. And then I can um, route that to the mute parameter. And now you can see it's doing the opposite of what I want. You know, when the reverb mute is on, it actually plays the reverb. Uh, when the reverb mute is off, it actually mutes the reverb. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to, I'm just going to save this preset right in here, and then I will Activate the C parameter input and activate the output. And then I'm going to you know, set that button to control the C parameter. And then I'm going to set the output to control the mute instead. And so basically, if I just want to invert the controller on the surface, I can just set A to be higher than B. Um, so remember, C goes from A to B. Uh, so if A is above B, then it's just inverting it. And so you'll see now, if I turn the reverb mute on, um, C is all the way up, but that means it's outputting the value at B, which is zero. And so that is muting the reverb. And if I press it uh, to turn that button off, then you can see, you know, C is at zero, which means it's outputting A, which is at uh, 1. And so now the reverb is on because the reverb mute is off. And so you know, this is just one example of when you might want to invert the value from a controller on the surface. But another example is actually with this citrus. So let's say instead of having the volume go positive, I want it to go negative. Uh, then I can just open up the formula controller and I can take B to be below A. And so because A is at 0.5, and that's um, actually at 0% modulation because of the bipolar volume control, it means it's going from 0% uh, volume to a negative percent volume. 
And so it's actually, uh, you know, the FM amount, it's still at zero, it's going to sound like there's no FM because the volume's at zero percent. But then as I increase it, you can see the volume parameter actually decreases, um, but it's decreasing into adding into adding the negative volume. And so the FM amount is actually going up. It's just using um, an inverted version of this waveform. Um, and you know you can see on the formula controller that's going from 0.5 and it's going down as I put this up. So yeah, that's pretty much it um, for this video. I will have this formula pasted into the description of the video in case you just want to you know, copy that down uh, a bit more easier if you can't quite see it on the screen well. But I think this you know, little technique is definitely something that can be helpful if you really want to start making your own unique and maybe complicated uh, patcher patches. Because having the ability to customize the range of the different parameters on patcher is uh, actually really, really useful. So if you like this video and you like this idea and you want me to do more kind of tutorials about Patcher and how to do some more advanced stuff like this that can be kind of useful, uh, just let me know in the comments. And if enough people are interested in it, I will probably make more of these videos um, because I have a lot of different small tips and tricks that are similar to this that you can use within Patcher to uh, just have a lot more control and a lot more power with creating your patcher patches. But, you know, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully it was helpful, and I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you thought it was helpful, please be sure to leave a like and maybe a comment if you have any questions or requests for future videos. If you're new to the channel, I encourage you to subscribe and have a look around. I've already uploaded a bunch of tutorials, and I try to release new ones every week. I also do my best to keep things pretty organized so that you can find what you're looking for a bit more easily. So thanks again guys for watching the video, and hopefully I'll see you next time.